In this video, I want to go over a demo of the FEMAP API and what some of the capabilities are. But before we do that, what is the FEMAP API? The FEMAP application programming interface lets you customize FEMAP to meet your specific needs. So what are some of the things that we can do with this? Well, we can add capabilities that aren't included in the standard user interface, or we can create custom tools to automate repetitive tasks. And you can also code in your language of choice as these functions can be called from Visual Basic, VBA, C, C++, or Python. Today in the example I'm going to show, I'm going to be using VBA linking Excel to FEMAP. So I brought up my Excel file here, and in sheet one, I formatted it so it has all the typical geometric dimensions of a bike frame. So you'll see some of my dimensions here include seat tube length, seat tube angle, reach, stack, head tube length, head tube angle, chain stay length, bottom bracket drop, and then on the right of that, I have my properties of the tubes. So I've made this so it's an outer diameter of the tube and then the tube thickness. And I have that for each of the different tubes of the bicycle. And furthermore, over to the right, I have a couple cells here to define the material. So right now I have it designated as a steel with Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. So once I hit the build bike button, it's gonna run through all the code that I've written. So I'll hop over into the developer tab and show you the code that I've written while I explain what it does. So the first thing it's gonna do is start a new FEMAP model so I have a clean slate, then create the curves from the geometry specs and mesh those curves with the corresponding tube properties using the material I've defined. And finally, after the mesh is created and all connected, I'm gonna create a RB3 that comes from the head tube down to the fork where the front axle would be so I can apply a horizontal load. It will then create a fixed constraint where the rear dropouts would be and run a static analysis. So I've opened up a new instance of FEMAP and I'm gonna jump back into my Excel file and I'm gonna run the build bike to do this first iteration on the analysis process. So pretty quickly, I have the results for my first iteration. And you'll see at the bottom, it's created me a new sheet called results one. And on this sheet, I've had it spit back out the end A and end B max combined stress from the Nastran run. And furthermore, I went a little above and beyond to calculate the horizontal stiffness of the bike. And I've also included a screen capture of the exaggerated deformation. So now I can do something like filter the end A max combined stress to find the peak. And maybe I'll use this number to consult my SN curve to find out how many cycles this will last for. So I'm noticing this is in the area of the down tube. And as I mentioned before, I've calculated my horizontal stiffness so I can use that to compare on iterations. So before I run my second iteration here, let me jump over to FEMAP and show you around the model. As I mentioned earlier, it's a fixed constraint where the dropouts would be and an RB3 element attaching where the front axle would be of the bike um, with a horizontal load simulating an impact. So I'm just going to animate the deformation here for a second. So I'll turn my animation off so I can jump back over into Excel and I can start on my second iteration. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the peak stress was in the down tube area. So now I'm just going to bump up the tube thickness from 0.0236 to just 0.03. And I could really change any variable I want here, but I'm going to stick to one for now to keep it simple. So I'm going to hit build bike again, and that's going to create the curves and mesh it and do the analysis over again. And now I'm going to get a second sheet here called results two with all the new data. So you'll see a new screen capture and the peak stress has changed from each iteration. So now let's compare the horizontal stiffnesses. So in results one, I had about 635. And in my results two, from bumping up the thickness of the down tube, I have about 723. So that's a small percentage increase in the horizontal stiffness. Thanks for watching the video. And again, I just wanted to show an example of what can be done with the API and FEMAP. If you have any questions about the API, the FEMAP forum is a great place. There's a lot of great users that'll provide feedback and a lot of help there.